Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Girls Building Empires podcast. Ooh, (laughs) you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, I like to really keep it real on here, and I'm feeling a little bit heated to say the least, and it's because I just finished recording today's amazing episode with the lovely Kayla Moran, and I record on Zoom, okay? And the thing that they don't really tell you about podcasting is that your whole job relies on technology. And when that technology fails, you feel like shit. (laughs) And I have been having the worst luck with technology lately. Literally, I mean, you guys probably know this if you've been listening, but I think two weeks ago's episode, the episode with Emily Adams, my mic completely just not functioning which is you know lovely it's like the primary thing of podcasting and then today's episode there's actually no video version to the main episode because just as I was literally about to press end on a zoom so I was we stopped recording but we were still in the meeting just as I was about to press end my whole laptop just completely crashes completely shuts off not shuts off it just freezes I can't move the mouse I can't touch any of the keys and I'm having a panic attack my two best friends are on a flight to Africa so I can't even talk to them to freak out about and I can't talk to Brody because well my boyfriend if you don't know his name is Brody but I can't talk to him because he is in practice so I'm just over here having a bit of a mental breakdown and Yeah, so what a great way to start off the episode. How is everybody doing? But I'm I'm doing great other than the technical difficulties. So I'm sorry if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be no video version for the main episode, but you can see me in the intro, which is (laughs) so great. But you guys, I'm in a bit of a hyper mood, if you can't tell. Today, and I think just recently, I finished my final quiz of university yesterday you guys i'm done my undergrad which is just so crazy to say out loud i am officially done my undergrad i now own own whatever i have a commons degree so exciting i don't think it's necessarily really hit me yet but i think that's probably why I'm just a bit more hyper today, but I'm also vlogging for my YouTube channel again. I'm vlogging every single week, which is a little bit stressful, but it's also so exciting because I can take you guys with me through my everyday life and it just feels like I have somebody there with me. For example, when I had this technical difficulty, I just filmed on my vlog channel, so I'm just chatting with you guys, but I hope you guys are having an amazing week so far. I know Tuesdays are the best day of the week. They are for me, so I hope they are for you, but let's get into the episode a little bit. Today's episode is with the lovely Kayla Moran, who I've already said we recorded for her podcast, Let's Get Candid, I want to say a couple months ago. I think so. And I knew as soon as I was done having that conversation with her for her podcast, I was like, okay, we need to get this girl on the pod. Her story is amazing. And it's not a story that is inspiring in the sense that like, oh my goodness, she is a a super incredibly successful CEO. And I can't wait to be at that. No, she's living what many of us are going through right now, being an a student or someone who is just getting into, you know, their career and her journey through studying law and then going to law school and then pursuing her social media to now realizing that her dream opportunity was just at the end. She just kind of had to get there, go through the troubles and her daily life of being a law student while having a million things on your plate. This girl, oh my God, you guys will hear my jaw was to the ground the whole time. I'm like, I did basketball school and podcasting, yet you make me look like a child. (laughs) No. So her story is amazing. I left the interview feeling inspired other than my fucking technical difficulty, but I know you guys will love today's episode. I'm not too sure when the episode with me for her podcast is going to come out. You guys will just have to go follow Let's Get Candid to find out, but I think it'll be coming out sometime in the summer, but we get into my life a little bit, which is super fun, but 
Enjoy the episode, you guys. Before we get into it, make sure you're following me on Instagram, just at Madison V. Reed. I'm posting on there all the time, on my story, what I'm eating, my daily to day life. It's I keep it fun and casual over there. I also have a YouTube channel, just Madison Reed, where, like I said, I post my weekly vlogs. But you can also follow Girls Building Empires on Instagram, and that's where we post just more updates about the podcast and kind of what we're doing just in the Girls Building Empires department. But that is it. You guys, enjoy the episode. Kayla, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. You, we... When we got on the call, you weren't doing so well. Do you want to kind of <laughs> explain the daily struggle of a yeah. podcaster? So it's funny that you say that because I have therapy right after this. So my therapist oh. is going to have a field day with me because... Perfect timing. Yeah. So I'm also kind of PMSing. So take that into account. Oh, God. But I'm like it's a roller coaster. Like law school, life in general, we all know that. Um, and being an entrepreneur same thing you know one day you go or in the same day you can go up really high and down like really low at the same day like within an hour with each of each other law school is kind of the same way like I can wake up and have a bad day and then that day ends up being like a really good day or vice versa Mm -hmm. and when we recorded back in spring break like my flight had kept getting canceled and delayed and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it home on time or back to school on time. I was home. Oh and my God. it was like, I'm never flying Allegiant again. I hate that airline. Sorry if you guys like Allegiant because it's cheaper. <laughs> I hate that airline if you're in the US. And I just was struggling because I wanted so badly to stay home. Like I didn't want to go back to school. I'm so ready to be done. I'm so ready to be back home permanently. And it was like, is this a sign that I'm just not supposed to come back to school? Like, what is happening? And there was just a lot, like, academically going on. Like, spring break is right after midterms. And I didn't have any midterms myself, but, like, everyone else did. And, like, it was just the weather. is like one day it's 80 degrees, one day it's 50 degrees. And it's just, like, you can't catch a break. And then on top of that, law school itself. And then just being a 24-year-old woman, like, figuring out life. And it was just, like, everything compounded on each other. And it's funny because I'm doing really well. Like, I'm the happiest I've ever been. Truly, Mm -hmm. I can say that. But yesterday I was crying because my mom was like, why the hell are you crying? And I was like, and I was crying in class, texting my friend in the middle of, like, an exam review because I officially ended things with this one guy that had been like kind of a situation trip all of law school and I for once and for all I was like I'm gonna give you one last shot like Mm -hmm. for my own sake like there's something that's still telling me like there's maybe something I need to know for me like I'm moving back home we have one month left let's see if this is like something that we really want to put time energy and effort into Mm -hmm. or like that's it. Like, for, I need to know one last time. And I'm really gra- glad I did. Like, truly so thankful that I did. All my friends agree it was, like, the best thing that I could have done. Because initially, the first week, he was like, yes, I see us long term. Like, I want this. I'm so sorry mm-hmm. all these things that I did. Blah, blah, blah. I've grown up. I've changed. And I, I believed him. And he really has grown up and changed. But then he reverted into his old ways again because he got mm. scared. And I was like, look, like, I can't keep doing this. Like, if you can't make three hours work, we're not going to be able to make three states away work. And I'm not going to always be the one making the effort. Like, I need yeah, – yeah. I, I deserve it. I know I deserve it. I want – you say I do, but you're not doing anything. Like, actions speak louder yeah. than words. And, like, it finally, like, cemented in my head, like, this isn't what I want. And I realized mm. I'm not that girl anymore. Like, I, I have come such a – he grew up, but so did I. And yeah. I've grown up so much in the last three years. It really in the last year alone, I've tremendous, like tremendous growth. And I just realized like the girl that reached out to him was still the like it was like an insecure part of me, like the younger version of me that wanted so badly for this guy to be the one, but he's not. Yes. And the girl that I am now isn't the same girl that wanted that anymore. And I realized it very quickly. Wow. It took two weeks, but all of my friends, like one of my best friends in law school was like I'm so proud of you for finally recognizing your own growth. Like, you've now realized what I've been trying to tell you all along. You deserve more. Wow. And I, when he is not a talker, he is not someone, my best friend, he's not super lovey-dovey. He's not a hugger, Mm. like, at all. And he just looked at me and I was like, what? And he said that to me and I was like, you're 
like, I hate you. You're going to make me cry. Like, you, for you to say that to me, like, and I just mm. realized, like, I'm not that girl anymore. And yesterday, like, it was my last day of classes ever. Like, 22 years of school, done. Finished law school, and I'm sitting there in class, and I'm, I'm crying, but it's, like, happy tears that I'm done. When my mom's yeah. like, why are you crying? I was like, because I'm mourning the girl that I used to be, not just with him, but, like, oh that God. was what made me realize truly, like, I'm not the same girl I was when I started law school, and I'm really grateful for that, but, like, it was a weird, it's, like, been a mind fuck. so, like, I'm doing great. Yes. I'm the best I've ever Amazing. been, but it's, like, also kind of, like, this weird, like, it's it's the closing of a chapter. Honestly, I feel like it's the ending of oh a book. God. Like, this whole, yeah. it's, like, more than just one chapter. It's, like, this whole version, old version of me, this part of my life, like, I'm truly ending that and moving you know when I move back to Florida now onward and Mm -hmm. upwards like bigger and better things for real this time like I'm not and I was telling my best friend this I was telling a lot of my friends I was telling my mentor who encouraged me to reach out and he was like all you're gonna do is reach out put the ball in his court and if he doesn't give you what you want then you did your part and that's that was 100% what happened and he was like at least now you know and you can move back to Florida fully like unencumbered and ready for what's next and you're not even thinking about the past and I was like you're right if I hadn't done it I would still be like what if what if what if Mm -hmm. and I'm not anymore so yeah I'm I'm great I'm doing really well I just feel like I'm a roller coaster of emotions because it's Mm -hmm. like this is a really big accomplishment like law school yes a lot of my classmates are like it's not done until July when we're done with the bar and I'm like that's true but like we also got through law school in the middle of a pandemic and we got through law school like yeah I'm gonna celebrate that too because there was a part um during the last three years of my life where I truly didn't think I would make it not just academically but like physically so I'm gonna celebrate this moment so I'm yeah I'm doing great (laughs) yeah oh my goodness and what you were saying about an end of a chapter like I can so relate to that and I've said this to my listeners many many times because I'm gra- not law school <laughs> but I'm graduating university too and I finished basketball and it's so weird because when you're in that moment where you're realizing that things are closing and you're experiencing the ending do you know what I mean like and I was saying this to my friend like a lot of the lasts like the last class or the last this you don't realize until you're out of it And you don't even really like remember the last time you did so-and-so or did whatever, you know what I mean? But you're finishing school and you know this is your last time writing this paper. This is your last time in this classroom. This is your last time. And it's so emotional. And it makes you reflect back on who you were when you first started. It's so crazy because, wait, how long is law school? Is it like three years? It's three Three years. years. Yeah. So I started in 2019, fall 2019 so yeah so like three years even one year two years like I look back on who I was and I'm like holy shit like I've come a long way and I think it's really hard to like reflect back on that because sometimes you can just get blurred lines or blurred glasses and just see what we're doing right now and be like oh I'm struggling but be like oh wait I've conquered that there's so much great stuff to come and what it sounds like is you almost have like a clean break like, yeah. I'm not trying to be like, oh, your breakup is like a clean no, break. But no, no, it is. I'm the perfect time to like go start your new life. Honestly, hearing you say that makes me so excited. I fucking love change. I crave that shit. So just me the too. fact that you're just like starting a new life fuels me. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's energy's like, <sighs> I know you can relate because with finishing college, which is a massive accomplishment too. And your last basketball game, like you're not going to be playing anymore. This has been your entire yeah. life has been basketball. And now that's, you don't have that anymore. And it's like an exciting time, but it's also like a sad time. Yeah. You're a, and it's like, people are like, why are you crying? Why are you so emotional? I'm like, because it's a big accomplishment, like in and of itself, but just like, yeah, like, I look back, and that girl, like, when we all started, we were so young, so naive, yeah. we had no idea what was gonna happen, and then COVID threw a wrench in it all on top of that, but, like, had, I don't even know, we, we don't know what would happen had that not happened, but, like, mm-hmm. I'm actually really glad that it did for me at the time, because it allowed me to really step into my own and figure out what I want and what makes me happy and what fulfills me, and that yeah. is... A career in social media I wouldn't have started the podcast had I not you know 
been on social media already and really leaned into it during the pandemic because we had nothing else to do. And Mm -hmm. I'm also really glad that I have this podcast and I have my social media to go back and see the changes throughout the years. Like, that's the beauty of it to me. It's like, I get to listen back to one of my first podcast episodes ever. And like, even in seven, eight months, I've come such a long way. So yeah, imagine in three years and like, yeah, I can so relate to like what you said, like when you talked about it, I think we talked about it, you and I last time, and you've talked Mm -hmm. about it in the podcast before, like your experience, like graduating and go, you know, your last game and what that felt like. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday I walked out of school and I was like, the next time I walk into this building is for finals and then I'm, I'm done. Like, that's so weird. Crazy. It's really strange, but it's also really exciting. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I don't even know if this is considered a breakup because, like, the real breakup was long, long time ago. But, mm. like, yeah, it's a clean break. I can truly, like, you know, I'm done. I, I texted my friend. I was like, I unfollowed him yesterday on Instagram, and I felt no emotion about it. And it's like, that's so stupid. Amazing. But, like, I really just, like, I feel good. Like, yeah, I don't know why this time, but, like, I know for a fact I'm done, but it's also just, it's, it shows me like I'm not that girl anymore. And that is something that I'm going to celebrate too, because there was a big part of me the last couple years that was, I didn't trust myself. I was so unhappy. I was struggling Mm -hmm. with self-confidence, self-worth. If I belonged in school, if I belonged here, like I was, I was having an existential crisis and law school didn't make it any easier, but now knowing like I've made it to that next point and like, I get to start a new chapter, fresh start in a new city. Like, it's not a new city. I grew up there. But, like, Miami's not the same Miami I was when I left. So, like, in a way, Mm. it is a new city. Like, I really, truly just get to have a fresh start. And that, to me, is so freaking exciting. Yeah. I'm so excited to see kind of how it all unfolds. But going on the topic of you being a law student. So, you're a full-time law student, right? Yes. Yeah. So, what... I guess, what made you go into law in the first place? And like you said, you probably, sounds like you questioned it halfway through too. Oh, I questioned it the whole time. And I think, (laughs) I think a smart law student does. Um, Mm. And I'll get to that. But yeah, I kind of always knew like, it's cheesy. Like I always knew I was going to be a lawyer, but like I always wanted to be a lawyer from a very young age. I grew up, my dad was in the military. I grew up watching like history and war movies and politics and all of these things and like I was like oh like I want to do that and everyone always would tell me like you'd be good at it and Mm. I was like okay sure don't know what this means so I always had that in the back of my mind and I liked learning and then I got to high school you know senior year of high school we took government AP government and I was like okay like I like this like I'm gonna go study political science in college and my professor encouraged it or my teacher in high school, they're teachers, and Mm -hmm. they encouraged it, and I was like, okay, like, I'm gonna do this, and then I got to college, and I found out, I actually don't like political science, I kept it as my minor, but I did a legal studies major, and looking back, I wish I would have done a more fun major, because you can go to law school with any degree, so if you're interested in going to law school, and you think you need to study, like, political science, or psychology, or English, like, you know, you can do whatever you want, and still go to law school later, so keep that in mind, and, but I didn't know that, Um, so I did a legal studies major and I interned, you know, political campaigns with senators, law firms. And I was like, I don't really love this, but this is what I've set out to do my whole life. And like, I'm just gonna, Mm. I've always kind of been entrepreneurial. Like I'll, I like to volunteer. I want to make a lot of money so I can give back and be a philanthropist. So like, it's like, this is just like, I kind of, and, and actually this is the first time I think about it, but I was in such a dark place in college just mentally Mm. and emotionally that I was going through the motions and I was just doing things because I thought I was supposed to and I really wasn't questioning it so looking back now it's like all those things like if I could go back and do things so differently I would but also I'm really glad that everything happened the way that it did because it really did happen the way that it was meant to but yeah I Mm -hmm. didn't question it I just like going through the motions like checking all the boxes and I graduated Um, So I took the LSAT twice my last semester of college. I graduated in December and I applied to law school in January 2019. Mm -hmm. So the year that I started law school was the year that I applied to it, which I applied pretty late. Um, Not that I didn't know I wanted to go, but just I had to take the LSAT twice. So that just happened to work out. And I told myself, I was like, I'm going to apply to the schools 
these schools. If I get into any of these, I will figure out like if it's a smart financial decision to go now. If I don't get enough money or like I don't get into any school that I feel like this is where I want to be, I will wait a year and try again next year. Who knows if right. I would have still gone if I had to wait a whole year. Who knows? I don't think I would at the now, looking knowing wow. myself now. But mm-hmm. again, everything happens for a reason. I got in, I got money, and I came to Tennessee because they gave me the most money, and I was like, it's a, like, I'm not ready to go back to Miami yet. Like, I knew long-term mm. I was going to raise a family in Miami, but I was like, I'm not ready to be back yet. So I'm going to go to Tennessee and figure my life out. And maybe I'll go to Nashville for a few years, Charlotte, D.C., I'll figure it out while I'm there. And it ended up being the best thing I ever did because I needed to get away to really rediscover myself and the people that I met here and the things that I did while I was here at school. And, you know, it it allowed me to come into my own. And I'll talk a little bit about how I got into the career path that I did. But again, if I hadn't gone to law school, I wouldn't have known that that was possible in a weird roundabout way because it's still social media related. Um, Mm. But yeah, once I got to law school, really early on I was like I'm not like the rest of my classmates like I can't just go through the motions anymore I have to you know figure my life out figure my shit out because if I I'm gonna get eaten alive and Mm. I had this really rude awakening and you know I I went home my first semester of law school having you know been suicidal um I did not do well in school and I was like and I I was the laughing stock of my class I and you know, not for grades, like, people really didn't know that, although at some point we all know where pretty much everyone falls, but um, even though we don't talk about it, you you kind of start figuring out who's, you know, where they are, but there was a lot of rumors about me that, you know, and, and rumors, part of them are based in truth, but the other part are based in other people's insecurities and projections, and I'm a flirt, always have been, I've always been friendly with guys, that doesn't mean that I am sleeping with them. But I do mm-hmm. like to flirt with guys. I'm, I'm a flirt by nature that I am, and I enjoy it. It's fun. I love to dance. I love to talk to people. I'm a very social person. Mm-hmm. That is not a very common Southern thing. I am in the South. Mm-hmm. I'm in the Deep South. And also, I'm Hispanic. I'm curvy. I, I learned to dress a lot more modestly in school like those the way i dress at school the way i dress at home are two very different ways because i don't feel comfortable here dressing the way i would in miami which i mean Mm tennessee is not miami so like some things you wouldn't wear here but still like and i just you know there was rumors that i was a slut that i was sleeping with all these people if i hugged them in the hallway that you know like it was literally like we were back in high school and i was just really Mm -hmm. struggling already and then those things were happening and I yeah just law school is really really hard for me at the beginning and I and I like I said when I went home for winter break my first year of law school I remember telling my parents um and there was more things that happened more rumors more things were said but I don't I don't think at this point like I don't it doesn't matter anymore like I've gotten over it but it did hurt at the time and I remember telling my parents and my faculty when I came back I was like there's either gonna be no me at graduation if I continue pursuing grades and like what law school you're supposed to do is have the best grades be at the top of your class if i do that there will not be a me at graduation or i focus on myself and i just treat this like school but like i'm not killing myself for it and then Mm. i'll you know i'll be fine i'm 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 not i'm not gonna stress about it i'm just gonna do the best that i can but i'm gonna put me first um my mental health i come first so which would you rather a daughter who graduates law school, maybe not the best, quote unquote, or no daughter. And my parents were like, okay, you're right. Like, I, I see what you're saying. And this had been a long time coming. I was telling you in college, like, it, I was on a downward spiral, but I didn't know mm-hmm. it until law school. So in a way, law school saved me, although it was also the thing that caused me a lot of pain. Um, wow. And then, yeah, so once, and then the pandemic happened three months later. So Mm -hmm. I I went home and I was like, people are creating more content while they're online at home or while they're like stuck inside. So I I was online a lot more and I was like, oh, like I can do that because while I was at school, one, I was either really unhappy or I didn't have time. But now I was Mm -hmm. home. I went to law school on Zoom. 
And I was like, I really enjoy this. Like I had a blog. I had been blogging already for a couple years. And I was like, I really enjoy this. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this too. And I loved it. And then a year later, I, you know, I was still going through school. I was thinking I was going to do real estate law, corporate law. So I was taking business law classes and I was enjoying them and I was meeting my professors and I was having fun. Um, wasn't the best time, but definitely better than I had been before. But it wasn't until 2021 when I truly, I connected with someone who does social media law. She is a lawyer and she's an influencer and she is an influencer's lawyer. And I was like, oh, like you can, like, I like both things. I, I, those are both sides of me. Like, why not? Yeah. Let me combine them. And I kind of like thought about it, but I was like, no, like, that's not like that's not a thing no one does that like firms don't do that I still thought that I had to do the firm thing that was what Mm. everyone around me was doing that's what law school preaches I thought that that was where I was destined to go because I had realized like I don't want to do like the be a jag a lawyer in the military I I ruled that out quickly and I was like okay corporate law and yeah I've I I told my professors I started talking to talent agencies like hey like do you need a legal intern can I help you over Mm -hmm. the summer over winter break whatever wasn't getting anything and then I met this woman and I was like okay like I don't know how you got there but like I want to do that can we connect yeah we did she's my mentor I'm gonna be working with her um and it just it really like but again like I needed to go through all of those things like and I think the pandemic happening really truly helped me and I know not everyone can say that that it was a good thing but Mm. for me it it really was it law school and coming to law school at the time that I did where I did in a roundabout way even though it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life if not the most difficult thing it was also Mm -hmm. the best thing I ever did because it allowed me to figure out like I can fulfill the childhood dream of being a lawyer but I can also do it in a way that I actually enjoy that fulfills me that makes me want to go to work every day and like yeah have fun while I'm doing it and connecting with people and meeting people and yeah so I always wanted to go to law school I always wanted to be a lawyer but you know saying that and then being in it are two very very different things and everyone's experience is unique and you know I've, I've said it but they kind of preach this one way like this is like the right way to do law school this is the path you're supposed to go on if that path isn't for you it's okay to to take the you know the path less traveled and nowadays at least at my school surprisingly my faculty and staff are very very like supportive and willing to help and you know our dean is retiring this year but Every time I would see him in the hallway, he'd be like, how's this person doing? How's this call? Like, are you, who have you, who have you talked to this week? Cause he knew I was always like doing weird things. And mm-hmm. he's like, he would be so proud of me. He's like, what are you doing after graduation? What firm are you going to? Are you doing a firm? What, how's the social media thing going? How's the blog? How's the podcast? How's this? Like people, once like I opened up about doing the non-traditional thing, everyone was really supportive of it. And mm-hmm. so don't pigeonhole yourself and don't, don't fall into a path that, just because you think you're supposed to do it, it's okay if that's not for you. It's also okay if it is for you. And, you know, it's up to you to decide. But I think, you know, law school, the way we approach law school, because people on social media are sharing a lot more about it now, is changing, which I'm very grateful for, and I'm glad to be a part of that. But, yeah, law school is quite an interesting experience, mm-hmm. I will say. Yeah, what I love about your story and honestly what inspires me probably the most is that you through your journey there was never a moment where you're like okay yes this is exactly the route that I need to be in yet you kept going and that opened up new doors for you you know what I mean because I think and I caught myself being in this too and I don't want to turn it all back to myself a lot but I think that these are things a lot of people experience but when they're in either high school and they have to choose a degree or they're in university or college or they're in law school or whatever it may be they think that's the end all be all kind of like you said like you need to take this traditional route you need to get a career in the degree that you got and I like how you just kind of like kept an open mind the entire time you're like you know what we'll see how this goes and you didn't quit which inspires me a lot too because I I cannot put myself in your shoes, but you just kept going and which opened up to new opportunities, which I'm so excited to hear about. Wait, so who, 
are you working with? Are you able to yeah. say? Yeah, I'll tell you. But so to, to answer that, so <laughs> I used to, and I, I sometimes still do call myself a cockroach, and my best friend hates that. <laughs> This is the best friend that sat me down and was like, I'm really proud of you for recognizing how far you've come. He hates yeah. that I say that. And I'm, I'm like, I'm a very resilient person. And I, mm. it's my best trait, but it's also my worst because I, I just keep going and going and going until mm. something makes me stop. And wow. there were times where, you know, I literally physically could not get out of bed. Things were just, I couldn't do it anymore. And, you know... Ultimately, everything happened for a reason and it all worked out, but it's okay to quit if, you know, you know, mm-hmm. fail, fail forward. Like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to quit if you recognize that that's not working for you anymore. But, so my resilience is why I've always kept going. But again, I, I was constantly checking in on myself. And right. that's something I learned in the last two years, truly. But... You know, it doesn't mean that I didn't, like I said, I've questioned the whole thing, but like there were days where the imposter syndrome really kicked in. It's Mm -hmm. like, am I, should I be doing this? Like I'm going, I'm doing this all quote unquote wrong. I'm not doing it the way that my classmates are doing it. And like, they never judged me for it. Well, my close friends that I know of, Mm -hmm. they have never, like other people might have, but like, I never felt judged or like everyone thought it was really cool because they saw how passionate I was about it. I think that's important. You have to be passionate about what you're doing because other people aren't going to believe you if you're just saying you're going to do it and you're not. Like, no, you have to, like, not prove it, but, like, you have to have passion that, like, shows people, like, okay, they're serious about this. Um, Right. Because it's not going to be easy. And going against the grain is definitely not easy. And it's not for the faint of heart. But everyone around Mm -hmm. me knew, like, this was, I was very vocal about my, my mental health struggles. I was very vocal about I was not doing well and this wasn't the path for me. And I wanted to do something else and I was going to find my own way. And because mm-hmm. of that, people recognized that in me and were like, okay, I'm going to support you. Let me know how I can help you. And mm-hmm. so I think that's really important. But yeah, there were times along the way where I was like, why am I still here? Like, this isn't serving mm-hmm. me anymore. But I realized... And, like, I've quit before. I quit dancing at 16 because I know it now. It was, again, I was in such a dark place, high school and college, that my I, I let my depression take over. And I I lost the one thing I was truly passionate about and I loved. And I, and I lost it. And I lost the love for it for a while. And now mm-hmm. I'm, I've come kind of come back into it. And I am hopefully can take classes now when I move back home. And I love theater and I love musicals. And I can't wait to be back in that world because I miss it so much but I let I did quit at one point and I realized Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna quit again I'm going to I'm gonna make the most of it I'm gonna silver linings I'm gonna take the good the there is good in everything like everything happens for a reason like you know every bad experience bad moment there's a lesson to be learned and I I started looking at it in that lens of like what are all the lessons that I'm learning what is this mm-hmm. going to teach me? And that's what I held on to. And if it truly, truly wasn't serving me, I stopped. But I realized, you know, if that's people, that's jobs, that's relationships, that's friendships, it's family, setting boundaries, all of those things. But I realized there's a common thread of everything that I've done in my life. If you look back, like there's a reason why I did it. And there's a bigger picture. There's a purpose somewhere along the way like I figured out that this is gonna lead me somewhere and I where do I want that to lead me can Mm -hmm. I can I change it or like is this like you know I I just list I I figured out like there's more to me and there's more to all these things like I don't have to be so narrow-minded about it I'm gonna big picture thinker dream big be a visionary and like you know so I, I say like if it's not serving you or helping you or you know then that's fine but if it's gonna serve a bigger purpose in your life even if you don't quite know what it is yet but you think it might listen to it lean into it a little bit more so for me law school it it, you know it wasn't my end goal wasn't the end path and you know for some people it is but I knew all along that like I wasn't going to be just a lawyer so I didn't want to be just a law student so I had my blog I had volunteering I, I did other things and I'm very grateful that I did not everyone can but that was my I, again I chose to put me first what makes me happy first but with all of those things I was like 
okay, like law school isn't my end goal, but it's going to allow me to get to where I want to be a lot easier, Mm -hmm. a lot, not quicker, but like it's going to allow me more opportunities. It's going to open more doors, like you said. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to stay on this path, but I'm going to make it my own. And I'm going to blaze my own trail. And I'm really glad that I did because I've seen people doing similar things behind me. I'm like, hey, like, however I can help you, I'm going to hold my hand out for you and, like, bring you along with me. Let me connect you to these people. Let me help me help you. And that was my that was my why for coming to law school. That's my why for starting a podcast is I want to help people. I want to inspire people. I want to encourage people to Mm -hmm. do what makes them happy and what fulfills them and lean into that and get candid along the way of like it's not that easy and it's not fun and I you know yesterday I was crying and laughing at the same time and Mm -hmm. I you know like today I probably will too I don't know but Mm -hmm. you know it's it you know life is messy and it's gonna it's not as easy as everyone makes out to be on social media it is a highlight reel but if I can show you along the way that it is possible I'm going to do that. And so, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because trust me, like it was unpopular, but Mm. because I was steadfast in what I wanted and what I believed in and and I am resilient. And again, I say it's like at this point, I'm, I'm tired of being resilient. Like I just want to enjoy it. And that was one of my intentions for 2022 was just to be more present and enjoy the moment more because I'm usually just in like flight or fight mode and I'm like no I want to sit and like actually like enjoy this moment that I'm in all that I've worked for so again ending of a chapter moving on to the next one like I really this chapter that's coming I really want to just stop and smell the roses but at the same time like I wouldn't be where I'm at today had all of these things not happened so I'm really really thankful for it um and if I can share that with anyone that's the whole I feel truly that's the reason why I'm here because For some Mm -hmm. reason, I'm still here. Again, like a cockroach, I'm still kicking. This is why Mm -hmm. I say that and people hate it. But like, it's true. And you know, so if I'm, there's the reason I'm still here and I'm going to, I'm going to help people along the way. Um, But yeah, so I will be working with Cameron Monet. She is based in Birmingham. She's a YouTuber, influencer, lawyer. She does all kinds of things. Entrepreneur. She's the owner of The Legal Tea and she's on TikTok. Um, as well so I will be working with her and I'm really excited Uh, um yeah I am actually meeting with her next week to talk like details and all of that but I'm so I'm so excited wow amazing first okay let's get into some logistics here because (laughs) I'm trying to I'm trying to connect the dots and be like okay if you do this what time so you host a podcast you run a blog you are a full-time law student and you work on Rella. Do you still do that right yeah. now? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, oh, girl, oh my goodness. Like, talk <laughs> about your play being full. How do you manage your time? Yeah, my calendar. Um, <laughs> live and die by cal- my calendar and the notes app on my phone. But the blog at this point has kind of become like, it's like a landing page. It has everything linked to it. And I'll occasionally write a blog post. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I, I don't foresee myself, at least in this stage of my life, writing too many blog posts anymore. But I'm going to leave all the old ones up. Like, I'm rounding out the law school chapter. Um, and I've talked a little bit about networking. And I will I will talk about, like, you know, tri- trips and travel guides and things like that. And, like, when, like, the Sephora sale comes up, I did one of those. But I don't mm-hmm. see myself being, like, a blogger necessarily, like full-time anymore like that's just gonna be something I do like for fun but I'm leaving it all there because there's some really great content but podcast has really become my main medium outside of Instagram um and like my Instagram is like my day-to-day life but my podcast is where I'm really telling you guys like what I'm up to and what I'm feeling what I'm thinking and having these deeper conversations with you which was the purpose of the blog originally but like and I love writing but I love having these conversations with people yeah so I I lean more into the podcast side. And then, yeah, I'm a full-time law student. Although I definitely am not the best law student. I don't um, do all of the things that I should be doing. And and that's probably why part of the reason I'm not, you know, the top of my class. But again, I realize that that wasn't the best use of my time. Right. And I'm just going to focus on, you know, I love to learn. 
I love mm-hmm. learning. I am not here for the grades or the diploma or the degree. Like, I mean, yes, I am. But, like, I'm glad I'm mm-hmm. getting it. But, like, yeah. that wasn't, again, that's not the end goal. Yeah. Um, I, I can, I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing, I need a law degree to do. But yeah. I'm, it's a whole different skill set that isn't taught in law school. Which, by the way, law mm-hmm. school doesn't teach you a whole lot. But that's another, <laughs> that's a whole other podcast episode that I've actually done. The tea is hot. On yeah. my <laughs> podcast. So go check that out if you're curious what I mean. But... Um, yeah, so, uh, I'm not the best law student, but, you know, it works for me. I'm still graduating, and I'm still proud of myself, and people around me are still proud of me, because, again, I didn't compromise who I was along the way, so keep that in mind, and then, um, what else? So, yeah, I work at Rella part-time, and then I also, when I can, volunteer and network and, like, help people with that. Um, not as much this year, but I had a couple campus positions. I was president of the Hispanic Law Student Association at school. Wow. Um, <laughs> which doesn't take a whole lot of my time because we're very small, but I'm sure if we were bigger, it would. But, like, there's other things that I do, too. But truly, like, again, if I am passionate about it, if you're passionate about it, you're going to make time. You're going to prioritize. Yeah. So my biggest tip is time management and prioritization, but really calendaring it all and, like, color coding and... Mm. I block out, so if I have a meeting or a call, I have it blocked off. I have my classes blocked off. I have events blocked off. That way I can see in between, like, where are the chunks of time where I don't have anything. Then I look at my to-do list, so they're side by side on my calendar, or on my computer, and I go look at my to-do list. I'm like, okay, I have two hours right there. I have to do Mm. these two things. Which one can I get done or can I get both done in that time period? And I kind of, that's how I do it. And my days are pretty much, I wake up around 7, 7.30-ish, between 7 and 8. But ideally by 7.30, I'm at least awake. Am I out of bed is a different story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm up. And so I'm checking email. I'm engaging on social media, which I know isn't the best. But, you know, there's only so much time in a day. It is what it is. Yeah. And, um... So yeah, I will wake up between 7 and 8 and I'm usually, I try to be done with like my substantive work or school by like 7 and then Mm -hmm. usually around then I'm hungry so I'm going to make dinner, eat dinner, clean up and then relax for a little bit. My podcast tends to be done like usually like Wednesday at 9 o'clock at night. I will literally Mm -hmm. lose sleep Wednesday night to get it up because there's a million other things going on throughout the week. But for the most part, I try to be done between 7 and 8 o'clock at night. And then I get to, you know, relax for an hour, two hours and go to bed um, and mm-hmm. do it again the next day. But, yeah, I I think you have to just know what, what you, like, don't do things just because you're supposed to. With the mm, exception of, like, so good. school. Yeah. Like, there's things you're going to have to do that you don't want to do. Like, trust me, I don't want to do a lot of the things I've had to do for school, but I had to do them. So I made time for them because I knew they needed to get done. But... For the most part, you know, just if it's not fulfilling you, if it's not serving a purpose in your life, reevaluate. Does this need to be there? And mm-hmm. so I, I, I took on positions that I ended up, you know, removing myself from later on throughout the last couple of years. Or, you know, I scaled back volunteering and things like that because I don't have the time in the day to do those things. But, and um with school again like I go to class every day and I will skim or do the readings depending on what class it is and if I know I'm going to get called on that day or whatever but mm-hmm. I don't go above and beyond if you are an overachiever and you you want to or you need to do that for your own sanity great but just recognize it then you're not going to have other time to do other things so it's a give and take and with law school but with life in general you get what you put in so, mm-hmm. you know, you, you choose, you know, you, 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 what you're going to get out of it is what the time, energy, effort, money, investment that you've put into it. So I just look at it as if I'm investing in myself. And if all the things I'm doing aren't an investment in myself, I'm not going to do it. And that's kind of how yeah. I've approached it the last couple of years. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of, kind of how you keep yourself motivated as well to do it because at the end of the day it's for you yeah right amazing and you talked about something about how you try to get everything done by a certain time at night 
let's kind of get into productive rest because I can't imagine your to-do list. Honestly, I'm like racking my brain and it's probably massive. So I'm assuming there's things that you just never end up getting to or you push off to another day. It happens to all of us. But how do you rest productively and like actually rest and not feel guilty for, you know, chilling and watching Netflix or just having a bath by yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So with my to-do list, like I said, I have them side by side, my calendar and my to-do list, and I have my to-do list broken up by day. So Monday, Tuesday, okay. Monday, Tuesday Wednesday, etc. And Monday, you know, I check them off or I delete them. I don't check them off. I just delete it when I do it. Um, and if, and I know what needs to get done that day. So right. I'll like star it or underline or whatever. If it doesn't get done that day and it didn't need to get done that day, I will move it down to the next one or I will stay up until I do it. I mean, it's not a hard rule. Like I'm done at seven. Like if I can't be done at seven, mm-hmm. I'm not. But like in a perfect world, that is the goal. But I, yeah. and I also listen to my hunger signal. So it might be five. Like yesterday I ate dinner at five o'clock because I was starving when I got home. You know, mm-hmm. it just... I listen to my body and that's something I've really leaned into and I'm very grateful that I have that relationship with my body to tell me hunger signals. That's something that not everyone does. Um, So, which is something that we should all work on, but I know it's easier said than done. Um, But yeah, if my my body, if I'm hungry or I have a headache, I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to do something about it. And so if it's four o'clock and I just, I have the raging headache and or I have cramps and I, I can't do anymore, guess what? Mm-hmm. It's not getting done. If I can't do it from bed, probably not going to do it. I'm not going to feel guilty for that. I'm just going to wake up the next day and do it. Um, but I do struggle with, the, you know, productive rest. I definitely do struggle with that. Um, I tend to be an insomniac um, because I have anxiety. And mm-hmm. I and I, I always said it growing up, I'm an insomniac, I'm an insomniac. But I didn't realize it was because I was anxious. I never knew that I was anxious until college. Um, but all along, I had both depression and anxiety from a very young age. Um, but yeah, so CBD really helps. If I'm feeling really anxious or I need to go to sleep or I don't feel super restful, like that I'm going to get a good sleep, but I know I need to, like I'll take melatonin and CBD. But during the day, I'll take plain CBD if I'm really anxious. I did that yesterday. Um, but I, I love to read. So to me, productive rest I'm the worst. I'll watch Netflix shows, but I'm on my phone 90% of the time. Like, I am missing what's going on because I'm – usually I'm Googling what the show is about. Like, I want to (laughs) know more. So I'm, like, learning what's happening by reading instead of watching it. I am so impatient with TV. Oh, my God. Um, It's really bad. I need to chill about it. But I'm also just a very curious person. But I love to read. So for Mm -hmm. me, productive rest might be reading a book. But then it also goes to the point where sometimes, like, I finish the whole book in one sitting. So, like, that's yeah. not good. Um, so, it, it's a balance for sure. It's definitely mm-hmm. something I struggle with, productive rest. But just listening to my my body, my, sig- my hunger cues or my stress cues, my cortisol levels, like, really, like, being in tune with my body. And, again, that's something that I've – I wasn't always good at, you know. I've really mm-hmm. leaned into it. Mindfulness, like, I don't practice mindfulness and meditation in that, like, the woo-woo sense. But I do, like, listen to – what it's trying to tell me and I've read a you know listen to a lot of podcasts where experts talk about those things and I take from here and there little tips and tricks and you know I've built routines that help me with that so like on a perfect day if it's you know I go eat dinner I'm usually gonna be done around with like substantive work when I go eat dinner so I'll make dinner eat dinner clean the kitchen and um come back into my room I might get on Instagram I might you know listen to a podcast might watch a YouTube video and then just like relax um might read a book might you know FaceTime with someone chat with a friend whatever and then around 10 11 o'clock at night I will take like melatonin or CBD so I can like start unwinding and go to bed Mm -hmm. and I turn off all the lights I have a salt lamp and like the mood lighting really does calm me and like mellow me out a little bit sometimes I'm still working at the like that late but again it's just I I don't beat myself up if I don't get what I need to get done that day done because 
I'm not Mm. curing cancer. I'm not, you know, it's not life or death. And I think we live in a society where everything is like the sense of urgency. And I think for some things I do have a sense of urgency, but for others, I'm like, I think people are like, do you care about anything at all? I'm like, no, not really. Like, I just, (laughs) it's not like, I, I care about me. I care about making sure that I'm okay and that I'm happy that I'm filled and that I'm doing what's best for me. If I, if this isn't like a top priority for me, and it is a top priority for you. I need you to let me know that. So I do it if you, you're waiting for me. But because it's if it's not top priority for me, I'm going to put myself first. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's, I don't know, and I, maybe that's an unpopular opinion. But I, I'm very particular with the time and energy I invest in other people. Because yeah. it does it does drain you. I'm an extroverted yeah. introvert. I do get drained by being around people. And... But I also get charged by being around people. It's the right kind of people. Energy, that is super mm. important. Um, so yeah, all that to say, I am struggling with productive rest for sure. But I have things in place that allow me to be better about it when I can be. And yeah, I work on it. It's something I'm working on. Yeah, for me too, when you talked about like the lighting, oh, the way it just kind of like sets the mood, like I feel feel my body relax i don't have a salt lamp which sounds fucking awesome but i do have you know the classic led lights lights. chirp me if you want but the lights off are off in my room the only light i have in here is i have like a desk lamp and like the the (laughs) blinds are open but it's dark in here right because it's early and i you know i also don't want like harsh lighting i want to Mm -hmm. you know feel like warm and cozy and that's something yeah. I got from Lauren Bostic. You know, she's very much about the vibes and setting the intention and setting the, the mood for the day. And, mm-hmm. you know, I have a saw lamp on right now. I, I usually, if I'm going to be home during the day, I'll turn it on because, again, the lights are off. So, like, again, setting a, a cool, like, vibe. But Setting the vibe, yeah. Um, but it, normally during the day it's off. But, like, if I know that I'm going to get certain things done, I will make sure, like, the vibe is optimal for whatever I'm working on. So, That's podcasts, right. you know, make sure that I have the desk lamp set up. I have, like, I have a, um, uh, like, a air purifier. I'll turn that off because that makes noise. Like, little things like that. Like, I'll make sure, like, yeah. yeah. and then, you know, when that comes back on, I know podcasting is done for the day. Switching over to the next thing. Um mm-hmm. I'll go work at a coffee shop. I'll go work outside. I'll go for a walk, like change the scenery. Like there's things I do during the day to set the mood and, you know, recalibrate how I, my, my mind and body. So I feel like ready to go because yeah, I'm code switching a lot. I am doing a lot of different things in one day. And my goal one day will be to like Mondays is this project too. This is this project, mm. but because of school, that is not feasible right now. But that is something yeah, I yeah. I hope to implement now once I'm done with school and I'm working. You know, mm-hmm. when I'm not working, because that's gonna be forty hours a week. You know, have like my time off from that be for certain things each day. And I'm gonna try. Right, not- right. Sound like an organized queen. Love it. I try. Okay, <laughs> Kayla. We are coming to the end of the episode, but I'm implementing this new thing called rapid fire questions. I know. So out of the box, but (laughs) they're just questions that I'm genuinely curious about and they can just be lickety split. So first of all, what is your dream career opportunity on social media? So whether it be like a dream collaboration collection or in your case, kind of what you're going to be doing, maybe what would you say would be your dream opportunity? Hmm. I'm really into like the productivity side of things so like I don't know like maybe some sort of like productivity app or Mm. um or something like that I don't know I can't think I'm really bad at like I love rapid fire but I wasn't expecting on the spot yeah the hot seat but um yeah just working with companies that allow me to share tools for productivity and and not productivity mm-hmm. in the sense of like you have to get all this thing these things done every single day like no it's just like helping you manage your time and manage your expectations yeah. and help you balance everything that you're doing right well i mean you have the experience to go into that so amazing next who do you follow that inspires you the most well i kind of just said it lauren bostic she has been someone mm-hmm. that i truly like 
I I look up to her so much. She's really inspiring to me. And and Marianna Hewitt. Like I think those are my two top influencers that and they're they're so much more than influencers now, but yeah. they have really inspired me in a lot of different ways in my life. For sure. Amazing. I love both those women. So great answer. Okay. Next. One skincare product that you cannot live without. Ooh. <laughs> She's like, this is the hardest one. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many. Um, I would say the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Peel Pads. Um, mm. I recently got into those again, and I am i don't know why I ever stopped. They're so good. I've been hearing people rave about them, so but I have sensitive skin, so I'm they super have like, hesitant to go into it. They have ones for sensitive skin, but I just use the regular. Oh, okay. But I do have sensitive skin too, and they're not super irritating. But I mean, I don't use okay. them. Like they say you can use it daily. I don't. I use it like once or twice a week. So Right. Okay. I mean, maybe I'll have to splurge. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> and last but not least, most recent read. You said you're a book lover. Yeah. What did you read most recently? Mm, I was actually looking at new books yesterday for after finals, but... Um, what was the most recent book I read? I think Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. Um, great book. I don't love all her books, but mm-hmm. that one was a really good read. Um, it was either that or I'm reading this series by one of my favorite authors, Jillian Dodd. And she Jillian writes a lot more like young adult. It's not super steamy, mm-hmm. but she's I've been reading her books since middle school and like I've grown up reading her books. So like I still like Aww. have like a soft spot and want to read them all. So, like, yeah. the latest release that she came out. So, it was either one of those two. Amazing. Yeah, I love Colleen Hoover. I have actually haven't read that one, so I might have to add it to my list. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Well, we're at the end of the episode, but I ask this final question every single week. And I mean, you're listeners, so you probably know what it is. Yeah. But what does women empowerment mean to you? Yeah, I was, I, I was honestly, like, thinking, like, earlier, like, what am I going to say? <laughs> but for me, truly, and... We actually, so for law school, we did leadership week and we were asked, like the student leaders, we were asked, what does leadership mean to you? And I think both go hand in hand for me. Um, And my answer is the same. It's just being unapologetically myself and showing up as me and in that way, inspiring others to do the same Mm -hmm. and like empowering women to be their, their true authentic self vulnerable unapologetically who they are and just showing up every day as who they are and I think that is you know that's why I gravitate towards Mariana and Lauren like yeah. these women are very strong empowered they're steadfast they know what they want they're gonna go after it and that has I've always been those ways even since I was a little but now truly coming into that on my own and having those mentors I want to be that for other people so just Mm -hmm. being myself and inspiring others to do the same and I think that is empowering so that is what woman empowerment means to me oh amazing a plus no (laughs) I love it I love it well Kayla thank you so much for coming on the show I loved you know hearing more about your story and you opening up a little bit so plug everything where can our listeners find you where can they listen to your podcast Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Madison. I had so much fun. I truly loved this podcast for the last couple months and connecting with you. So I'm honestly like, this is like a pinch me moment coming on this podcast. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. But yeah, you can find me at Kayla Moran on everything, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest. My blog is kaylamoranblog.com and my podcast is at the Let's Get Candid podcast. Amazing. Well, thanks, Kayla. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Okay, you guys, that is it for today's episode. I hope you really enjoyed hearing Kayla's story and go show your support to her. Go follow her on Instagram, see what she's up to because I know that I'm so excited to see what is in store for her. She's got me inspired about my future, let alone hers. You guys, it just it just feels like a changing of chapters. I love the season change. I'm literally staring outside my window right now and the sky is so blue. I wish I could somehow show this to you guys, but I am in a great mood, feeling hopeful, feeling inspired. If you enjoyed today's episode and you've been sticking around for a little bit, then why not follow us? Because then you can get the new episodes in, you know, your podcast folder or Spotify folder, whatever you're listening to this on, 
every single week and you don't have to keep searching us to get the new episodes. How you do that is just a follow button, I think, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Super simple. Once you click that follow button, boom, you're all set. And if you really enjoy listening, then you can rate us five stars. It takes literally two seconds. You just scroll down on Apple Podcasts to the very bottom and click five stars and you're finished. You don't have to put any other information. You just tap five stars or on Spotify, it's near the follow button. You just click like a rate button. It has a star with some ratings next to it. You just click that, click five stars, boom, you're done. You don't need to put in your email. You don't need to put in your number. You don't need to put in anything. Just tap it and you're done and it helps us out a bunch. But that is it for today's episode, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Bye.